Okay, so I know you guys love it when I talk about herbs. And I love it too, to be honest. So in response to your feedback, I've decided to introduce a Herbal Ally series. It won't be every week, but at least once a month, we'll take a look at either a herb that's coming up quite a lot in clinic, or one of my favorites. Today, I'm talking about myrrh. Those three wise men were onto something when they chose gold, frankincense, and myrrh for their gifts. It's potent, it's powerful, and its uses are broad ranging. Let's get started, shall we? Well, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Project Joyful Podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Tutte, your medical herbalist and high performance coach. So, hey, Project Joyful isn't just about being happy, it's about consciously creating a life you love. It's about remembering how to reconnect with your soul centered joy. You know, that joy that comes from doing what you love, from living on purpose and from being in a life that allows you to experience deep joy moment by moment. So hey, let's get started, shall we? So myrrh, or Comifora myrrh, comes from a family of Comifora trees that are found in Yemen, Somalia and Ethiopia. The medicine is a resin that's collected from the tree's branches and it's dried for later use. Because it's a resin, it doesn't dissolve in water, so if you're making a tincture from it, you need to ensure that the alcohol volume is at least 90%. It needs to be shaken well before it's used so that your shaking creates a temporary emulsion. This combination of the natural properties of myrrh and the high alcohol makes it your go-to for disinfecting wounds. But beware, the high alcohol content in the tincture does make it sting a bit. It's broadly antibacterial, it's also effective against two waterborne parasites, liver fluke and schistosomiasis. It's also astringent. So think about the combination of those properties in terms of closing wounds and keeping them clean. Many of the music festivals have a herbal first aid tent, and powdered myrrh is used around the clock for those party-induced scrapes and gashes. It's also effective against airborne bacteria. So if somebody in your house has a chest-based bacterial infection, for example, burn some myrrh resin on a charcoal disc to disinfect the air. You can also use an essential oil in a steam burner. Myrrh is also your bathroom cupboard go-to for mouth infections, ulcers and sore throats. It's quite bitter, but you do get used to the taste. To make your gargle, add a teaspoon of myrrh tincture to half a cup of water. Swill it around in the glass to create that temporary emulsion. You'll know it's hanging together because the liquid will be a creamy colour. Swish it around in your mouth for good dental health or gargle it if your throat feels a bit sore. Don't worry if you swallow some, as its combination of disinfecting and tightening makes it a great digestive herb as well, and it's good for the liver. Researchers also confirmed its traditional use for gingivitis and bad breath. It's known to heal mouth ulcers and its anti-inflammatory action calms the redness and swelling associated with gum disease. It's a wonderful skin herb, particularly in relation to acne, weeping eczema and bed sores. It reduces pain and it has some effect as a pain relieving anti-inflammatory when it's applied to sore muscles and joints. The essential oil of myrrh is a great after exercise rub down. Add 40 drops of essential oil to 100 mils of olive oil. If you need it to be a bit more glidey on your skin, experiment with substituting some of the olive oil with grapeseed oil until you get your preferred consistency. Grapeseed oil is really slippery. It doesn't need to be entirely myrrh based. Get creative. Maybe add in some essential oils of ginger, wintergreen, but not if you're allergic to aspirin as wintergreen is full of salicylates. Try some lavender or some lemon. Today we've just talked about the medicinal properties of myrrh, but its use is so much more than physical ailments. It's often associated with spiritual practices and it's known as a herb that is calming and grounding. It invokes a sense of reverence and invites us to step into a space of contemplation and reflection. It's used in embalming, so it accompanies us from this world to the next. 
Comifora Mura is definitely one for the herbal first aid kit. Personally, my preference is to keep it in tincture form. That way I can easily convert it into a mouthwash or a gargle, dab it on that annoying spot that appears in the middle of your face just before a big event. You can create a liniment by combining equal amounts of the myrrh tincture with oil. Shake it well and rub it briskly into the sore area. Now remember, plant medicine is potent medicine. If you have any underlying health conditions, you're pregnant or trying to get pregnant, or you're lactating, or you're taking any medications, don't just rely on the information in this episode. Just because it's natural, it doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you. Please do get individualized advice by consulting with your medical herbalist. Not only are they trained in which herbs affect a particular health condition or your current life season, They're also trained in herb-drug interactions and and choosing exactly the right herb for you. You see, your body knows exactly what it needs to heal itself. Be that herbal, pharmaceutical, food-based, emotion or mind medicine. My job as your herbalist is to connect you with the herbs your body is already searching for. Sending you lots of love. Bye for now. Hey, thanks for listening to today's podcast. Can I ask you a favour? If our conversation spoke to you today, could you please take a moment to leave a five-star review? Your review will help people discover this podcast and together we can create a world where there's even more love and more laughter. And if you want to hear more from the Project Joyful podcast, just click the subscribe button. Bye for now.